For water. For life. For life. For life. We run. For all people. For all people. For all nations. We run. We run. For our brothers. For our brothers. And our sisters. And our sisters. We run. For water. For life. For life. We run. 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 dance right now in Utah and it's incredibly snowy and the reason why I am here um, I don't take photos sorry <laughs> unless you want to stand in front of the sign and then we can do it um, I'm here because uh, I was invited to come speak with Chairman Dave Archambault from Standing Rock Reservation uh, as many of you know I'm sure from watching these videos because it's kind of all I post about um, the Dakota Access Pipeline last year at the end of last year um, the Army Corps of Engineers decided to deny the easement, which was a huge success and a major triumph. But it doesn't stop there. The environmental impact statement um, was released, but as we have President Trump now in office and as we are not sure about his next steps, we the people must ensure that we're going to stand up against corruption and that we're going to stand up in the face of adversity, despite how strong they think they may be, despite how much money they may have, they only have money if we allow our investments and if we allow our personal pockets to be invested in these corrupt, um, in these corrupt manifestations of greed and the fossil fuel industry. So anyways, I was invited to the Sundance Film Festival to speak with the chairman. And as I got here and connected with some of these water protectors who have been on the front line since the beginning of the Dakota Access Pipeline, we soon realized that Chase Bank is one of the largest sponsors of Sundance Film Festival. Um, Chase Bank is also heavily invested in the Dakota Access Pipeline and it would make a lot of money um, when this pipeline, if which it's not going to because we ain't gonna let it pipeline we're able to um it's so snowy to get built uh so 
We're here to invite Sundance Film Festival, to invite everyone involved in this film festival, every um, person who's here as a supporter, every person who's here as a sponsor, and every person who's here putting an icicle snowman right now, putting this event together, um, to, to look at how they support indigenous communities, how they talk about indigenous communities, and how there is such a large um, um, presence of indigenous culture and community involved in the Sundance Film Festival, and yet one of their largest sponsors is someone, um, is a bank that has invested not only in the Dakota Access Pipeline, but in many, um, in many different business ventures involving the fossil fuel industry that unfortunately is destructive to not only indigenous people, but to all people, to future generations. So these these amazing water protectors came out here to um, to invite people to look at that, you know, because there is a certain hypocrisy in, in talking about indigenous cultures, but not actually doing anything as an ally, as a non-native ally, to stand with them um, and to bring attention to subjects that highly need it. So if you are at Sundance, please come join us. We are at the Chase Sapphire on Main Lounge or the Chase Sapphire Lounge on Main. It's super snowy and beautiful out here. And um, we're, we're doing it. So Water is life. Come join us. Uh, and clearly, as we can see, Mama, Mama Water is with us. All right, I'm gonna stop talking and let you hear these amazing wise speakers. Many of us, many of us came straight, straight came to Sundance directly from Standing Rock, where we've been most on the front lines. We've been spraying with water cannons in 30 degree weather, and we've been attacked with dogs, all because we're standing in prayer for the water. We're standing here today to ask you all to divest your money from, from Chase Bank. Invest your money into banks that support community, into banks that support us, into banks that support green energy, and to support our just transition from the fossil fuel industry into green energy. We stand here in solidarity again for our relatives in Sandy Rock. We stand for our water! For our water!
I'm a water protector from Porcupine, South Dakota. Um, I've been out in Standing Rock in August, from August to December. Uh, right now, what we're looking at is this Trump presidency has dedicated themselves formally to authorizing both the KXL pipeline and the Dakota Access Pipeline. We are in a hard, determined fight now. We have, we have no place less to retreat to. Um, that pipeline looks like it's about to go under the river. And as soon as there's authorization, as soon as the Trump presidency can manipulate the situation so that this EIS is overthrown. Um, we, are, we are in the maximum mode of danger of having the Missouri River to be contaminated now because of this pipeline coming under the, Dakota, under the Missouri River from the Dakota Access Pipeline. Right now, we need people to divest from the banks that are funding this operation. We need people to be willing to show back up in North Dakota to do some nonviolent direct action. We need our local leadership on the ground to support water protectors in doing nonviolent direct action. And this is a hard thing. Um, our local Standing Rock people are burnt out. They've, been, they've had their main route to their local town uh, taken over and shut down by Morton County since October 27th. Um, our friends are tired. Our friends, our relatives are hurting. And right now, even as water protectors, we still need to be ready to mobilize on the land to shut down this Dakota Access Pipeline. Oh. Woo! 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 My name is Michelle Ladder, I'm Algonquin Métis from the Kitigan Zibi First Nation in Quebec, Canada. I am here today uh, to stand with my friends. I spent some time in Standing Rock documenting what is happening there, and I think the greatest misconception is that we feel that this is over. Well, my friends, it is not over. <laughs> On Friday of last week, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe asked the camps to close. We cannot close these camps. We cannot, our water is not for sale. Our land is not for sale. Is our world for sale to these capitalist corporations that are committing genocide on our people? This is nothing new for us. This is nothing new for native people. We have had genocide committed on us since the 1800s. This is 2017. They can't continue to do this. We need our allies. We need our black allies, our white allies, our native allies from all over. For the Acheti Shikon come up, we need our media. This is not over. You think that the veterans came, they made an apology, it's done? It is not done, it is just the first chapter. In Canada alone, the federal government has just pushed through three new pipeline projects. What you see in Standing Rock is just going to be a continuation of what you're going to see across the Americas. 
Now I ask you, if all of you, if you can't come to Standing Rock to be there to stand with us, divest your money, take it out of the banks, and when you do that, tell them why you're taking it out. Thank you. We stand. We stand. For our brothers. For our brothers. And our sisters. And our sisters. We stand. We stand. For water. For water. For life. For life. We stand. We stand. For our children. For our children. Again, we are here today in solidarity with our relatives fighting against the Dakota Access Pipeline. We ask that you divest your dollars from Chase Bank, from Wells Fargo, from U.S. Bank, and the other banks invested in the Dakota Access Pipeline. Support community banks, support banks that, that are focused on moving towards or just, transi just transition from the fossil fuel industry into green energy. Uh, we've been fighting the same oppressors since 1492. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk to an amazing, wow, female warrior hero, Serene Fox. Um, Hi. Do you want to introduce <laughs> yourself? Bonjour, Anine, everyone. My name is Serene Fox. Um, I'm Anishinaabe Ojibwe from Batuana First Nation in Canada. Um, and I'm at Sundance. Um, to support my brothers and sisters uh, from Standing Rock and from frontline communities all over the world. Um, and, they, and who is this? What's up, y'all? Taboo Black Eyed Peas, but most of all, Shoshone Native, uh, representing, doing my part, standing in solidarity with my people at Standing Rock, Shailene, Serene, all the people out there doing their part. Let's do more. Yeah. We're here. Absolutely. So we want to just remind people that we are not targeting Sundance. We're so proud of all of the work that happens here. And as artists in the media um, who, are avail who have an available platform, we believe in this platform. And we're asking Sundance to acknowledge that and to consider divesting from Chase. And we believe in their power as a film festival and their influence in community. So uh, we're here at the Chase Sapphire Lounge, and we're encouraging Sundance to consider this relationship that they have with Chase Bank and to consider all relationships that threaten Indigenous communities. If Sundance supports indigenous programming, then they inherently support indigenous lives. That means they cannot support corporate interests that are literally threatening the lives and the future generations of our people. Ah, oh, could not be better said. Do you want to tell them about Rice? Yeah, so um, I'm here at Sundance because uh, uh, we have an eight-part documentary series that's coming out on Viceland, um, and it premiered on Saturday night. Uh, it's got a two-part, a two, uh, one-hour uh, specials on, on uh, Standing Rock, so we were able to have that work here and we are able to have the protectors be able to see um, all of the work that they've done over this past year. So um, we're really proud of that work and you're going to be able to watch that and to see all the water protectors and the beautiful work that they've done um, in seven countries around the world on January 27th, so it'll be on Vice Land. And then how can people keep up with you and find out what you're doing? And Because I find you super inspirational with the work that you do. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shailene. It's mutual. Um, they can follow me. Obviously, social networks uh, have been really important for this fight. I always say that uh, cell phones and social media are our new weapons. So you can follow me. I'm at Serene Fox. Um, it's S-A Rain and then Fox. Um, also, follow the work of Rise uh, and Vice. And yeah, I really appreciate all your guys' support. And I really, really encourage you to think about where you invest your money and then just also about who you are and how you as a person want to stand with other people not just indigenous people but choose a fight don't stand for nothing there's no point in, in wasting this beautiful vessel that you have every single morning you have the opportunity to stand up and make a choice to do something and I, I encourage you to find out what inspires you and to put all your energy into a fight um, and I encourage you to fight for indigenous people but that's me <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> I'm biased yeah
Yeah, so we're really, really happy to be here and for everyone's support. So thank you so much for everyone's support and prayers. And please keep praying for all of our protectors who are still on the front lines at Standing Rock. We can't forget that they're still there. Um, it kind of seems like there's been a resolution. There hasn't. Uh, there are still brothers and sisters who are on the front lines. So please continue to pray for them um, and to continue to talk about Standing Rock, to talk about frontline communities. Don't let this die out. we got to keep it in the media. we got to keep talking about it. we got to keep saving the world. Okay, so one more yep. thing. Yep. I think there's a lot of people who have the misconception that we're done now, now that the Army Corps denied the easement and that Obama in, you know, um, put out the environmental impact statement. So why do we have to pay attention to Sandy Rock still? Like, what is the importance of paying attention to the Dakota Access Pipeline? Yeah. So basically, every single um, win that we've had, Dakota Access has come back and said that they will continue to move forward. Um, so basically, the way that it is, is it's just like a little kid. Um, as soon as you turn your back, if you tell them not to do something, they're still going to do it behind your back. So what we have to do is we have to hold Dakota Access Pipeline accountable for what is going on in energy transfers. We have to hold Morton County accountable for what's going on. And and with the new administration coming in, it's really going to depend on our eyes. Nobody else is going to watch for these things. We have to continue to watch. Um, and we also have to... Um we have to prepare for the fact that Trump could do many things to just allow this to happen, and so we have to continue to rally. There is no safety for Standing Rock, and do not listen to anybody who tells you there is until every single pipe is removed from the ground and they are no longer there pointing their, their weaponry and their lights and guarding us, then we, are we should still be afraid. So as far as I'm concerned, they're still there on the ground, so we're still there on the ground. And we need you from home to be on the ground with us, whether it's actually in North Dakota or from um, the comfort of your home by divesting from these big banks. So. Yeah. The front line can be in your hometown, too. You, you can, like, like, literally rally. If you come from a town of 35 people, then get every single person out and march through your streets. There's nothing that you can do that's too small. And just believe in yourself and believe in any action that you can think of. Yeah. So rain fast, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. All right, I'm going back to lockdown. <laughs> Me too. Let's go. Sorry. There's my girl Malia, one of the first people to get arrested out in North Dakota in September. What I find to be so magical and so inspirational is that we are at a film festival right now. There are so many creatives here, so many people with so much power to use media as an influence, um, an influencer, and to influence so many people, not only in America, but around the world, to open our eyes to um, indigenous cultures and indigenous communities. And like Serene Fox said a minute ago, you know, if this isn't your fight, find your fight. There's so many things out there to be involved in and to be aware of. And once you know, you can't unknow. There's no more time for ignorance, and there's no more time to be followers. We all have to be leaders now, and it's it's really exciting. It's a beautiful opportunity for all. <laughs> I can't even talk. There's so much snow. Um, for all of us. To, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> um, to be involved in something. So. I just look here, you know, like across the street is IMDb, the IMDb Studio Lodge, which is the international movie database. Um, and all of the people in there have power, these directors and producers and creatives and writers and actors and, and artists, just artists, so many of us. Um, you know, I think one of the beautiful things about 
about when shit kind of does hit the fan or when we have a, a global situation that's so dire um, or where there's so many people that are hurting. Uh, there's a beautiful opportunity for art to be used as a rescue buoy, you know, to sort of like throw out into the giant waves for us to grab onto and believe in and be inspired by and be moved by and to also recognize that we're not alone in any of these movements. So um, wherever you are in your hometown, create local art installations, create whether it's whether it's movies or whether it's, um, hey, sorry, um, or um, <laughs> whatever, create art. Make art and make art with an impact. Make art with a statement because that's how we're going to change this world. So um, I don't know if you guys have been following. I'm sure you all have all the radical art that's already come out of all of these marches that have happened the past few days. But we have to continue that momentum. And Standing Rock is a huge part of that momentum because Standing Rock is calling for direct action. It's encouraging all of us to recognize that the power does lie in our hands um, by divesting. You know, the, the pipeline cannot be built if there's no money invested in it in the first place. Doesn't matter what Trump wants. <laughs> doesn't matter what Trump wants. It doesn't matter um, what his administration chooses to do if there's no money invested because of people like you and me and all of us at Sundance and the, the people, the sponsors behind Sundance and the creatives behind Sundance to understand that the people that they are allowing to be their corporate sponsors are actually the same people who are threatening the lives of so many and continuing the slow genocide amongst indigenous cultures. And that's a big, heavy word to use, but that is the correct word to use. And I think it's important for us to recognize that. I'm going to shut up now. Okay. Hi! It's <laughs> 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 Oh, I'm still alive. So I'm still alive, yeah. I'm still alive, yeah. I don't know. Tell us a little. I know it's just a little bit. Okay. So, this is my dear homie, Josue. Josue Rivas, who has been on the ground at Standing Rock the whole time. Most of the footage that you saw online is footage that this incredible human being captured, this incredible artist captured, um, Brave Warrior. And so I'd like to invite him to share. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, so I think what's really important to understand about this whole, especially this action at Sundance, is that, um, you know, as an indigenous filmmaker and as someone that, you know, really cares about um, how, we, how we fund and how we really you know, go about money when it comes to indigenous issues, indigenous films. I feel that uh, Chase being a major, um, you know, sponsor for this for, for this festival, it's it's kind of contradicting in a way. And you know, I don't think we're here out to shame anyone and to put a blame on anyone. But I think that it's really important that you know we look into the into who's funding what, and and we do know that Chase is a is a big part of funding uh, energy transfer partners, which is the father or mother uh, company for the code access pipeline so you know we can't have a, a world where we we are just taking the money from the people that are oppressing us or the people that are funding that oppression and from someone that was on the ground and really witnessed some traumatic stuff you know as an in rug I can tell you for a fact that that money that Chase invests in this in this company comes down to people getting hurt and people getting hurt on the ground so as a filmmaker and as a, you know, as a human being most importantly it's it's really important for us to speak up about those things and really like bring awareness to it and call people out like get people in check and say like hey Sundance like we we love you we care about you a lot because of all that you do but we're also concerned that your sponsor is you know is funding um, a company that might be hurting indigenous people and they are hurting them so that's what I have to say uh, I just head, one yeah. thing you know Sundance that word has a has a lot of meaning. Sundance is like a it's like a ceremony for the Lakota Lakota Nakota people. So yeah, it's so like, it's the crazy shit. Yeah. When we, I mean, do you want to just talk on that a little bit more? Uh, like Sundance in itself, that word has significant meaning um, yeah. to so many, and yet so many of us only know that word associated to this film yeah. festival. So when it when it comes to marrying Sundance the film festival with Sundance the significant indigenous, you know. Yeah. Ceremony. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Exactly. Yeah, and I think you touched on that very, very, very importantly because it is a ceremony. Like, for like 
Lakota, Nakota, Dakota people and all the other people that practice sun dance. It's and a Lakota huge... people, for people who don't know, are people, are Standing Rock Sioux Reservation yeah. are Lakota, Nakota, Dakota people. Yeah, so the folks that, yeah, the folks that practice this ceremony, um, it's like one of the most important ceremonies for the whole the whole year, really. So and for me, like, you know, I'm trying to digest all this because I'm a new filmmaker. I'm learning this whole circle of, you know, Hollywood shit. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like learning like, okay, so this is what it is. And I think this is also a ceremony if you think about it, because, um, you know, there's a gathering here of people that are actually, um, I feel that have you know a certain energy, which is the energy of creating films and creating art. So that in itself is a gathering, and I think that you know for most folks that don't understand it, it's like um, you know it's what you bring into the ceremony. Who really holds the ceremony for you? That ground in that space, and I think that right now we, especially with this whole thing with Chase, we're realizing that you know who's holding that space for us is like a company and a bank and a corporation that that is investing in in a company that is hurting indigenous people. So. So yeah, it is. It is a lot about, you know, it's, it is about ceremony, really. It's, and how do we show up to that ceremony, you know? And how do we show up to like spaces like this and not be ungrateful? I'm not ungrateful whatsoever about Sundance. I just know that there's so much work to be done, and it's okay to call people out. That's it. Yeah, there's room for change, and yeah. and there's room to be uncomfortable in order to welcome in, yeah. in the new. Um, um, so to create so, dynamic yeah, impact. Comfortable. I, I think about the Nako video that we just made. Yeah. Uh, oh, have you guys yeah, seen that? You gotta, you gotta that Oh my god, fucking made me cry so many yeah. times. So Nako, Nako Bear um, of Medicine for the People, uh, just released a beautiful song called Love Letters to God. Uh, he's a dear friend of both of ours. And um, Josue, the footage from his music video is... Did you edit it too? Did you put it I too? edited it. So what it was, it was... And this is really important to acknowledge too, that the media and people that were on the ground like some people, most people left, but there was a group of people, poor people that actually stood there and like held the ground and like consistently like documented. So, <laughs> Unicorn, like this yeah. one. <laughs> well, like me and like Unicorn Riot, like a lot of the footage that is like really crazy footage came from Unicorn Riot, which is a, a collective of like filmmakers and like um, just photographers and videographers. And they were like, they got hurt, they got arrested, we, regardless of the fact, you know. Okay, let's go back to this thing. Uh, you go? And our sisters, but this is important to talk about. right now. Keep it live? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Or somebody else maybe can? Here. What do we It's this way. I'll just do this. How about that? We stand! Here, I'll hold it. It might be easier. Okay. Hi. Okay. Shaylene, this is Democracy Now! And you know it's radio and television, so could you please begin by introducing yourself? Hi, my name is Shaylene Goodley. I am an actor and also just a human being who cares deeply about not only this generation, but all generations to come. There's many actors here at the Sundance Film Festival, but I don't see many of them out here. Can you talk about what the significance is of this action here at Sundance? This is an incredibly significant action. Um, there are a lot of actors here. I'm not sure that all of them know that this is happening. I think we would actually have more support for more people if they knew about this event, and hopefully they're checking social media so they know what's going on right now. Um, but the importance of this event is I've been coming to Sundance for so many years. Um, Sundance in itself, right, the name Sundance represents a ceremony, a very significant ceremony to the indigenous people, the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota people um, in, uh, in America. And... Sundance has, for a very long time, been a supporter of indigenous communities, um, has supported their filmmaking, has supported their culture, has talked about their support of indigenous communities, and yet, here we are at Sundance in 2017, and one of their main sponsors is Chase Bank. Um, you know, this is not to, we're not standing out here to call out Sundance in a negative way or to say that this is wrong or you're a hypocrite. We're here to invite Sundance, to invite its sponsors, and to invite every single person who not only attends this film festival, but who also puts together this film festival to recognize that it's one thing to say something and it's another thing to participate in actual democracy. It's one thing to participate in actual change. And by having a supporter, by having a sponsor like Chase Bank, you're completely contradicting um, all of the 
vocal support that you do have with indigenous communities because Chase Bank is one of the largest sponsors of the Dakota Access Pipeline and profits off of the Dakota Access Pipeline as well as Wells Fargo and Bank of America and all of these other larger banks. Um, so we're here to bring attention to uh, and, and make people aware of um, the bigger picture because it's really easy